Hello, everyone. I don't think that started. Let me go ahead and stop it. Hello, everyone. This is not going to be a full-blown uh, two-and-a-half-hour lecture. It doesn't have to be. The information for you is sitting here. I just wanted to make sure that we understand what it is it's asking you to do, and then I wanted to show you how it looks over in live text. Tonight's Module 1 is about understanding TPAC and SAMR, both of which can be a very complicated uh, idea, especially TPAC. My goodness gracious, TPAC is a um, theoretical framework that's used by researchers in education. So for ordinary folks like you and I, it can be a little bit scary. Let me show you what's in here to help you see what you're doing. So here's our module, uh, and it says Understanding TPAC and SAMR. And if you scroll down, here's the lecture for it from last summer. And it will basically go into much greater detail than I'm going to go into here. But if I were starting out, I would click on that link to open up the module folder and then click on the link to open up the TPAC folder. And then I would watch this. TPAC simply explained. I'm going to let it run just for a little bit, not because I want you to watch it while you're sitting here with me. We're a teacher ready to tap students into 21st century learning. He has a whole new layer of such expertise. TPAC, or Technological Pedagogical Content. I would start here. It's just simple to understand, um, and you don't have to. Uh, kill yourself trying to understand it. But I'm going to show you a little bit more, a little more detail, and I'm going to show it to you through a PowerPoint that I made many years ago. Um, this first slide you see here is the framework. In other words, this is what it looks like to researchers. Um, I think I made a joke about this on Monday night, about how all educational research starts out with three circles. Uno, dos, tres, there they are, the three circles. But as you can see, it's made up of content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. Now let me jump through this. Hang in here with me. What the folks who created TPAC, uh, Mishra Punya and Matt Kohler from the University of Michigan, uh, excuse me, Michigan State University, I apologize, they were looking at it through this lens. They were looking at it as a wicked problem. How do we help teachers understand how to use technology in their classroom? And when you look at it, the term wicked problem is truly a sociological term. It's not made up. As you can see there, I give credit to C. West Churchman, who's the one who came up with a wicked problem. And as you can see, requirements are incomplete, contradictory, and changing. No two wicked problems are the same. Solutions are difficult to realize. Solutions are not right or wrong. Solutions do not have stopping rules. And that, my friends, sums it up very succinctly about the problem we have with technology in schools. We start with this idea about teacher knowledge. You cannot understand how to integrate technology in your classroom if you're still struggling with understanding how to teach what you're trying to teach in your classroom. It's just a no-starter. And one of the things that always amused me was in KTIP, we always expect people to demonstrate how they can use technology. Well, it's really what we should be looking at is how are they doing with teaching their content? And then if they can figure out how to slide technology in there, more power to them. The other piece of the TPAC is pedagogy. And you know what pedagogy is. That's how you teach. Now, this was something that this idea was developed by this gentleman, Lee Shulman. And I call this the pedagogical dance. Uh, Lee Shulman did a great deal of research on this. And what he was trying to get at was how do teachers who teach 
good content, how do they go about doing it? Is it all one pedagogy? In other words, do they talk all the time? Are there multiple pedagogies? And do they slide in and out of those pedagogies when they are teaching? There are times when you have to stand up and say, OK, here's a new term. This is the stuff we're going to be learning. We need to understand what these terms are and how they fit into what we're learning. You're talking. But then the good teacher will slide over and go into a pedagogical shift where they'll go into giving kids group work or giving collaborative work or doing deep learning. In other words, they give them something to do that helps them understand what the new ideas might be and then how to internalize them. That's all it is. Pedagogical content knowledge is the ability to slide in and out of pedagogies while you're teaching. Um, you see this, really see this, with elementary school teachers. They're sliding in and out of pedagogies all over the place uh, in a classroom. You very rarely see a classroom teacher who's standing up there lecturing at kids, unless they'll read them the right act for something they did at lunch. High school people, not so much. High school people don't slide around in pedagogies very much. They pretty much do a stand and deliver. The really good ones, when you go into their classroom, you could feel it because the energy is so alive in there. The kids come in all ready to go, and they can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Middle school, you see a lot of pedagogical sliding because you have to. You can't keep the kids' attention otherwise. So this is a very simple idea. Now, here's where the technology kicks in. So when we talk about pedagogical content knowledge, then we add this idea. Oh, let me read you this quote from Shulman because it's a good quote. If these preconceptions are misconceptions, which they so often are, teachers need knowledge of strategies most likely to be fruitful in recognizing the understanding of learners because those learners are unlikely to appear before them as blank slates. Now, what does he mean by that? He means that people come into your classroom and they already have preconceptions about what it is you're going to try to teach them. You see this all the time. Where you see this really, really well is in kindergarten when a teacher is starting to teach letters with sounds and she'll show a picture of a cow. Now, if you're in an inner city school, a kid's never seen a cow. And so when the, kid, when the teacher goes, what sound do cows make? Well, first of all, that's a disconnect because you're trying to teach a letter sound. Maybe it's M, but a cow starts with a C. We won't go there. But so they'll say, what sound does a cow make? Well, kids will come up with all kinds of answers because they've never heard a cow. And so what he's saying is, when you have these preconceptions as misconceptions, if you don't have a way to shift around your pedagogy, then kids are going to keep those misconceptions and they're just going to carry them forward, which will cause them to keep messing up on what you're trying to teach. Let's go back to the kid thinking the cow. So uh, pedagogy might look something like simply turning to a smart board and having a picture of a cow up there, tap on it, and the cow goes moo. Or having a, a toy that when you turn it to where there's a cow and you pull the string, it says moo. The cow says moo. So all this is pedagogy. Now, that's a really simple answer or example, but that's what he's talking about. You know, if you go and, and think about kids who come in who think they know how to solve um, math problems, and they've got this weird kind of <laughs> way that they go about doing it. And they'll say, well, it gives me the answer. Yeah, but if you don't shift the pedagogy around to give them a chance to experiment to see how the system that you're trying to teach is better. OK. So how do we then see this fitting in with technology? Well. We have to think about technology as another skill set that teachers carry around in their teaching toolbox. The pedagogy part says you don't go into a classroom and it's technology all the time, every day. You just don't. Because what Schulman says is the pedagogical decisions that you make are based upon the content you're trying to teach. 
and the situation. It's all very situational, otherwise known as context. So if the context says that we're trying to understand something that is a difficult concept, having multiple ways of approaching that concept will always, always work for you. And that's what technology is really good at. All right. And now the boys say, the boys, listen to me, the boys say that technology solutions need to be creative, novel, and whole. Now let me pop through this real fast. So creative, novel, and whole. What they mean by that is we need to have novelty in that we're trying to use new tools or new web tools or new ideas in our classroom. Effective means it works. Hey, how about that? And whole means that it's a part of the gestalt of your classroom. It's a part of what you do in your classroom. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into classrooms and the teacher will go, okay, it's technology time. Go get the laptops or go get the iPads or go get this or go get that. And the place just disintegrates because it is not built into the fabric of the classroom. I've been in classrooms with teachers where it is built into the fabric. And all of a sudden, things just start happening in the room. Kids are going to computers. Kids are getting things. Kids are sitting down and working in groups, and they're solving problems together. That is what the guys would say is truly a TPAC classroom. Now, I'm not going to spend too much more time with this because, as I said, if you'll go in here, and watch, well, there's the lecture if you want to hear me ramble on. But if you'll watch the video that has to do with TPAC, which is in this folder right here, it says it's simply explained. You hear them explain to you exactly what I just said. What I wanted to do was to fill in some of the blanks for you. So TPAC is nothing more than the interplay of content, what you teach, pedagogy, how you teach, and the technology that allows you to do that as a part of this whole pedagogical slide, this dance, as I like to call it, that Shulman first enunciated in, what, 1987, I think it was. And so what we're trying to see here is we want teachers to become critical observers or critical decision makers of when to employ it. Simple as that. Now, that's TPAC. Um, there's all kinds of videos in this module that you can watch. Here's five steps to lesson planning with TPAC. Makes just perfect sense if you look at it. Uh, we're going to be using this here in just a minute. I'll show you how it works. If you'd like to hear and see the original TPAC uh, presentation by Mishra and Matt. Here it is. Right. Uh, thanks, Ben, uh, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, join me with Kobe Shirt. And without further ado, we'll move on to the introduction. Okay. So it's extremely long. Um, and I'll be quite frank, I just gave it to you. <laughs> and as I said, this video right here will give it to you as well. Now, let's talk, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about SAMR. Now, where we were looking at TPAC from the lens of a research uh, model, SAMR is very solidly based in practitioners. In fact, uh, from what I understand, People are talking up SAMR in schools now. Um, JCPS, I understand, goes out and talks to, to schools about SAMR and using it in their decisions about using technology, which is, yay, <laughs> that's wonderful. So when you look at it, basically what it says is that, oh, I'm not going not gonna to make you watch that. You can watch that. It basically says there are four levels of technology integration. And what it tries to get you to think about is 
how do you see the technology being used in your building? If you think about this, SAMR is an outgrowth of the Bloom's taxonomy. In other words, the higher up the Bloom's triangle you go, the more involved and the more rigorous and more challenging and the better the education experience is. SAMR says something very similar. It starts off with something called substitution. So in other words, if you're using technology and it's just a replacement for something you've done before, the best example I've always heard is word processing. Well, word processing can take the place of paper pencil. The argument against it is it's an awful lot of hassle to take out the computers, get kids to load up word, da 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 da. The upside of it is you have predictive text, you have spell check, you have the ability for people who struggle with putting ideas down with a pencil. You'd be surprised how many kids have that problem, that all of a sudden the world has opened up. The downside, of course, is using the keyboard. You know, very few kids are very proficient at keyboards. Now, some of the stuff that's really exciting, though, is when we look at things like um, Google Classroom, or I should say the G Suite that's part of Google Classroom, and you look at Google Docs, it has the ability for you to record, and then it turns it into text. Really exciting stuff there. And that leads us on to the next one, which is augmentation. So in that, the example I just gave you, that's a really good one for augmentation. So not only do we have to now have the ability, it's very easy to put down a Chromebook in front of a kid and ask them to put down their ideas about whatever the content is that we might be teaching. But since Google Docs allows you to hit a little button and now you can just talk and it changes everything into text for you on the screen. And it does it very, very well. Um, that's augmentation. You're using technology to do something better than you could do it before. Then we get to modification. Modification is where you can use technology to change how you've done things before. This class is all about modification. Um, in other words, in just a minute here, I'm going to go through what the task is. So using a tool like Pictochart, to create an infographic. First of all, we're doing a substitution. We're not using poster boards and glue and all of that messy stuff. We're doing a redefinition. We're giving kids an opportunity to, and you, to rethink how you want to present information. Since uh, a lot of us are very comfortable in the visual world, but we're also comfortable in using words, Pick the chart allows you to do both. So it's a modification. And then finally, there's redefinition. Redefinition is where you actually do something that you could not do unless you had technology. Give me an example of that. Um, kids that I worked with at Brandeis Elementary were wanting to do um, reports on biomes. That was a part of their science curriculum. And one of the things that we did is we created uh, a green screen experience for them to come in and report on what it would be like standing in their biome. We then expanded that, working with the teachers to say, so what other animals are in the biome? And so we could put that into the green screen experience as well. So kids would look like they're standing in a, a forest, or kids could look like they're standing in the swamp. Now what was fascinating was the kids also knew about something called blabber eyes. And what Blabberize allows you to do is to take a picture and put a mouth on it, and then you can record and the mouth moves. So they started having their animals talk. One group of uh, young ladies, they actually were doing their biome was on the swamp, and they actually had the trees singing a little song about what it was like to live in the swamp. Now that, my friends, is redefinition. Okay, a lot of videos here to allow you to kind of um, get your head even more around it. Now, notice in this little uh, thing I've got here, um, 
they basically, it's hierarchical. So substitution is the bottom of the rung, and redefinition is the top of the rung. Just like I said, it's like in um, Bloom's taxonomy. So if you look at it again, one more time, substitution is computer technology. It's used to perform the same task that you did before you use the computer. Uh, the augmentation computer technology offers an effective tool to perform common tasks. I like to think of it, too, as being able to do the task better or to give, and this is very much a universal design for learning kind of viewpoint of it, I view the augmentation as kids having an opportunity to participate in the learning process where they couldn't before because they struggle with writing words or they struggle with, with spelling, they struggle with all kinds of things. And as I said, Google Docs allows you now to dictate and it turns it into words. Redefinition is where we take an idea and the technology allows us to think about it in a different way. And then modification is all about, modification is where you just go off the, out of the box thinking on how we can do the simple idea of doing, say, a, a book report. And so people will create book reports where the kids uh, actually create a character and go animate, and then that character walks in and talks to you about what the story is about that he is uh, experiencing in, in, the, in the book. So that is my take on TPAC and SAM. Um, let me turn my editing off because it looks real crowded and it doesn't need to be. So this is TPAC, this is SAMR. Watch the videos, you get a very good understanding. Uh, the assignment basically asks you to do two things. Uh, it is asking you to create an infographic where you try to get your head around these two ideas, TPAC and SAMR. Now what's interesting is, and, it, and I deliberately did this, so if you want to yell at me about making it too hard, I'll stand, you know, accused, but I'm trying to get you to think about these two ideas. So I'm going to ask you to build an infographic using Pictochart that depicts the weaving together of TPAC and SAMR. Now, you can be sitting there right now and you can go, uh, hello, there are two different things, Steve. You already said that. Yeah, I did. But what I'm trying to get you to think about is, are there things about TPAC and are there things about SAMR that are related? I would argue that the TPAC teacher who is truly comfortable with their technology tools that are available to them could easily jump through the ladder, uh, the hierarchy, if you will, of SAMR. They could easily move from substitution to augmentation to modification. Redefinition, yeah, redefinition is, is a stretch, but it's not that hard to do. And so let's look at pick to chart real fast here because a lot of the things that you need are already in the pick to chart. Sorry about that. I don't know why that link didn't take me to it, but it took me eventually. And when I'm in here, what I'm going to do is you can log in as little old Steve, okay? And that is using my username, which is sbswan. Zero two. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here. I'm trying to get into the picture chart where I can log in. There we go. Now I can see it. Okay. You can log in as me, um, or you can do like what it says here is you can have a free account. But if you log in as me, you get access to all the accounts. Now, if you've already uh, sat through Monday night's class in 585, you already know how to use this. And I'm going to show you a couple of things for those of you who are doing this for the first time. Number one, um, as you can see, you have the ability to pick the kind of pick the chart that you want to use. So you start by clicking Create now, and you're going to create an infographic. You can go with a blank, or you can use a template. Now, the template 
ratchets up the thinking a little bit because you have to kind of think about what it is that you want your infographic to be about. And so you're kind of looking at these samples that are in here and you go, hmm, that kind of looks like what I want to do. Or you can just go over here to free templates and pick a blank one. Now when you pick the blank one, now it's all yours. You own it. Okay? And so the first thing you're going to do is where this box is. From here on out, it's very, very PowerPoint-y like, I think. So I'm going to move my graphic up here because I think that looks cool. And now I'm going to give it a, t a sort of a title. Oops. Don't know why I just did that. Let's jump back. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give it a title. And I'm going to get rid of what's already here. You know why I did that? Because I had it all highlighted. Okay, so here we go. TPAC and SAMR colon can we get along? All right. So there's sort of my title. I've already got it in mind what I want to do. Notice, notice, you see, you have these nice boxes already created for you. Uh, I had someone ask in the Monday night's class, how big does this have to be? Well, there you go. <laughs> it's designed for you right there. Now, I can uh, move this box around. You already saw me do that. And just like in PowerPoint, I can come up here and grab the little, you know, and give it a thing like that. Now, if I want to start putting things in here, I would urge you to look at uploads because there's an awful lot of images already in here that people have taken the time to find. And you might find them useful. Oh, look. There's the TPAC model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that in over here. And I'm going to keep going down through here. And what I'm looking for now might be a SAMR model. They exist. You see there's an awful lot of math in here. Are you getting the idea? So you can look in here, or you can go to graphics. You can go to photos, and you can search. Now, here's the problem with searching here. This is a limited amount. You see, it's just basically what they have rights to show you. So when you go in here and you look for something like SAMR, like I just did, you might get lucky and find it. Uh, you might get a picture that you think shows it. Oh, look. Here's one that does kind of show it. How can you see? Well, let's move on. <laughs> let's see. Here's another one. So I'm not really having much luck here. So let me go back up here to my uploads. And I'll just keep looking in here and eventually I'll hopefully find something. Let's go ahead and put that in here. And so now I have another picture that I'm adding in to my graphic. Get rid of this one. And I'm going to slide this one over here, give it a little bit of a tilt, move it down a little bit so they can all live together, and now we are rocking and rolling. So at this point where the question marks are, I can go out, I can get rid of everything just by highlighting it and hitting my backspace or delete key. At this point, maybe I want to start thinking and writing. So at this point, I'm going to change over to text. And as you see, it gives me different kinds of looking text. It gives me text frames that I can use. Some of them are quite, quite cool, quite interesting looking. Uh, others are just basic old text. Or if you just want to grab one and drag it in. And now you can start writing. Pack and simmer 
are looking for how technology is used in classrooms. Okay. Now, what I can do, oh, thank goodness the uh, spell check is working. <laughs> I can go in here and I can move this around. I can make it bigger, smaller, however I want to do it. Uh, when I do that, let me, let me do that right now. Okay. Get rid of that U and that S. And I just get rid of everything. Bring it back. I'm going to want to give it a, t a heading here. That's what it is. I've got T Pack and Singer. Look for the same things. And I can move that, like I was trying to do, and I can make it bigger, which is well, the other thing I was trying to do. And it's, since it's sitting outside of my box here. There we go. Now, I can put in more pictures here if I want to. Now, what I have to do, though, at some point, is I have to justify what I'm saying here. So if I go back over here and I do my, well, let's go back to that graphics. We probably can find something now. Let's put in something like computer here. Let's see if it can find a graphic for us to use. Okay, good. So I'm going to drag that in, and I'm going to make that smaller because that's way too big. And maybe let's see if they've got anything else like let's see what happens if we put in tablet. enough. I got a Kindle. And so now, the Kindle, I can think of Kindle as what? In Samer. Substitution. And how does it then fit into TPAC? Well, if you're thinking about giving kids the ability to easily carry around a whole bunch of books, you can't beat a Kindle. And there for a while, the big the big topic was that we were going to give every kid in every school a Kindle so they could have all their textbooks uh, in that one small device instead of carrying them around inside of backpacks. So this is kind of how you do it. And then you basically write your ideas. That's all. When you're finished, You're going to come over here and you're going to tell it that it is now public, in other words, you've published it. And the thing you're giving to me inside of Live Text is that right there that says Link Preview. All you do is just copy that. And then over here in the Live Text, and I can't do what it looks like for you as a student. I just can only do what it does for me as the educator. But I just want to show you. There's where you put it. Copy the paste of the URL of your infographic here. And then you just basically go boop and paste it in there. Now let's look at the second part of what it's asking you to do. And what it's asking you to do in the second part is it wants to ch choose a TPAC lesson 
from the TPAC wiki, and there's the link, and embed it into live text and complete the TPAC observation instrument. So let's do that. This is a wiki. For those of you who are in uh, Tuesday night's class, this is what a wiki looks like when it's all grown up and looking really busy. And as you can see here, uh, here's the guys and their videos. And down here at the bottom, there are video after video after video of people doing or using technology in their classroom in a, all kinds of different settings and content. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking for a class, an example, that you think you would like to look at through the TPAC lens. Now all you got to do is just click on one. It will come up. I'm on your right. I teach third grade at Oakdale Elementary. Today we're going to be doing a sick home group lesson where I'm using an app called Socata. It's like a clicker system and it lets the whole class respond and you can see the results. Um, it's a really neat way for me to see how my kids are doing and if I need to repeat something or anything. So this is um, a really good teacher who's using Socratic. Uh, if you've never seen Socratic, you know what's interesting about this video, and I'm not trying to give it away. No, oh, I'll give it away. It's a really good video. But uh, you don't hear of Socrative, as some people call it, Socrative, as other people call it. You don't hear about it in a third grade. <laughs> you only hear about it in high school. But so here it is. So I'm going to take this. Now notice, I'm not going to embed anything. All I want to do is copy the video URL, and then I'm going to take it over to my um, live text. And now I'm going to paste it in, and I'm going to look at the video And you're going to paste in the URL right here, right where it says paste in the URL. And then what I want you to do is read these. By the way, you've got your edit turned on at this point. Um, you're going to be looking down through here, and you're going to be deciding curriculum goals and technology, matching technology to curriculum. Are the technology used in the lesson strongly aligned with one or more curricular goals? Are they used in the lesson or designed with one or more in curriculum goals? Are they partially aligned? They do not align. Highlighted and bolded. And then go all the way down through here. There's a little bit. And just say, this is how I see this through the lens of TPAC. And that's all you're doing for module number one. You're going to build an infographic that looks at the interplay of TPAC and SAMR. Yes, I'm pushing you. <laughs> it's not cut and dried. You're going to have to think a little bit. Then the other part is is to look at the all the different um, teaching resources, videos that are there on that wiki space, and find the one that you want to use to run it through the TPAC observation. Now, oh, hi Chanel, I didn't know you were here. Uh, I hope you've been able to hear me through all this, have you? Yes, I, when I first logged in, I, it looked like you were trying to fix something, but eventually when I got back in, I saw you already in the lessons. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, for some strange reason, the uh, collaborate went a little wonky. But you've been with me since I started really talking about TPAC and SAMR? Yes. Okay. Now, um, I want to show you that right here in the module, you can watch this. Notice the link. 55 minutes and 59 seconds. It's almost an hour. Okay. One second away. 
if what I just did for you right now gets it done, do you understand what we're going to try to do here? We're looking at TPEC SAMR. Yes. And then you're going to make a pick to, pick to chart, an infographic. Did I go through that too fast, or were you able to be with Well, me? I wasn't able to log in, because when I clicked on the link that was in the module, it took me to pick the chart, and that is what I saw you were working on, but you gave a username, and it, it asked me for an email. I didn't have right. a username now, only. Yeah, I didn't say that very well, did I? Let me go back, and let's, let's go back in there. You will use my email and my password. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is, go ahead and click out of here. That is S, B as in boy, mm -hmm. S W A N 02 at louisville.edu. Uh -huh. And then the password is all lowercase letters U L I T. Two four one. That's my office down here. Okay. So it's all lowercase letters U L I T two four one. Yeah, I couldn't remember what you had given us last night. I didn't make a note of it, but um, yep. yes, I didn't write down right. just now. So all this Web two O stuff that we play with, just write that down. Okay. Because that will get you into every single one of them. Okay. Um, it's it's not like um, I do it because it's paid. And that gives you access to everything. But I also give it to you as a gift. Uh, if you ever want to use this with your kids in your class, feel free. And let them all log in with me. Okay. Now, last night when we were looking at GoAnimate, the thing I was trying to stress was if you let them log in as me and you're GoAnimate, they can put out stuff to YouTube or wherever. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not want to let them do that. And so in that situation, you're going to get a hold of me, and you'd say, I'd like to use it with my kids, and then we'll just create a class. Okay. And that way they'll log in with their own uniques, and but they can't do anything with it. Right. You could do something with it if you wanted to, because you'll still be able to log in as Steve. But then when they get done, all you can do is let them come up and you know run the computer and show their cool um, animations they made. I worked with a group of middle schoolers this summer here at the at the college, um, and the people brought them in were giving me all kinds of heads up about these are really, really bad kids, and uh, they are going to be a handful. And they, about 15 minutes later, you know my rule, stupidly simple, 15 minutes later they were totally lost in the creation of their Go Animates. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of smiled at them and I said, you know, if you give kids challenges that they will rise to the challenge if they understand how to do it. And they just had a blast. They, they probably said, they said, no, they didn't probably. They sat there for an hour. And then they were started to ask the really good questions. Like, I wanted to do this. Okay, well, you go here, go here, go here. Okay. And then they were like, okay, now you can leave me alone. <laughs> Pick the charts, the same thing. You know, they'll play and then they'll realize what they can do and... But then every once in a while they'll come along and they'll ask you, you know, a question. Right. All right. I'm gonna. I, I'm done. Unless you've got a more specific question for me. In the picture chart, I noticed that other than your title, there were just pictures trying to demonstrate your idea of how these two are getting along. So is it just pictures totally that I'm using to create that? Yep. I've had people do this particular exercise. And they'll literally start out with, at the top, uh, the one box will be TPAC. And they'll put in their understanding of TPAC, which I think, you know, if you watch that video and remember what I've just said, it's that interplay of technology, pedagogy, and content. The technology must, 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 the teacher must have good uh, technological understandings, as I said, Never use a piece of technology that takes more than 10 minutes to explain. Um, then it fades into the background and the content and the pedagogy come to the front. That's what good TPAC lessons should be. Like that one we were getting ready to watch there of the third grade teacher. I've never seen a third grade teacher use uh, Socratic. That, that just blew me right away when I first saw that. 
that teacher, if you, if you watch that video, it just fades away. In other words, the use of the technology just fades away. Then they'll go into the second box down here, and they'll put in the SAMR. You know, SAMR is really easy to understand. How are you using technology in the classroom? It doesn't care about pedagogy or anything like that. He just wants to know, are you using it as a word processor? Are you using it, you know, in another way? Are you using it to change how you could have done things? In other words, kids drawing on the computers, uh, kids making stories on um, iPads using, oh, what's that thing called? It's, it's a cartoon app that lets you, it literally takes you through the storytelling arc. And it says, okay, now that we have a setting, let's find the characters, so on, so on. Um, Toontastic, it's called. It's a great, it is a great, great uh, app. But see, that would be augmentation because it's literally taking the original idea of writing the story and using the technology to show you how the pieces, how to write the story. Then redefinition is where you basically say, let's just do something so totally different that we never could have done it before without the technology. Those are rare, but they do happen. They happen more often than you think. Uh, I see teachers using technology, especially now with VR. I see kids exper experiencing VR, and then they come back and they basically talk about what they saw, how, you know, how it made them feel, so on. So two boxes, you can do it that way, or you can do it my way, which was I kind of come up with a stupid little line like TPAC and SAMR, can we get along? But basically what you're doing here, and you do not need to make this like a term paper. This is basically boxes of text with pictures that if I look at it, I can quickly understand what your point of view is. Maybe you might have a point of view that says they can't get along. <laughs> They're two totally different things. That's a good argument. And, you know, some days I find it hard to uh, get them to hook together. But I think there's enough in there that you can. Anything else? I'm not in any hurry. You know the rules. I can't leave here until 7.30, so <laughs> you've got me. No, I'm good. I, I think you're, you're pretty straightforward with what you've given us, so I'll take it from here. Okay. Uh, the live text, you're, you're okay with the live text explanation, where it lives and how to do it? Yes, I haven't gone into it as yet because I didn't get to. I wanted to finish off last night's assignment, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and probably turn both of these in at the same time. Live text can be very daunting. I mean, you know, I've been using it now for how long I've been here, 12 years, and I still have to sometimes stop. Or like today, from last night's class, uh, Eric wrote me an email, and he said, Steve, the live text doesn't look like the blackboard. And so then it's like, oh, my God. And I have to go back into live text, and somehow, some way, the old version got moved to this semester. So I just basically went in today, found the, the, the new version, and just replaced the one that was in there. It, it always does stuff like that to me. But the thing I want you to realize is when you go into live text, you're looking for the template. You're clicking on that link, use this template. And then you have to look for the pencil. And then it turns on the edit ability. And then when you click inside, like where it, you know, I was showing you where it says, put your URL here, then the window opens up that gives you the tools that you can use. And the same thing, when you go down into the observation instrument, if you just click into the uh, window where the different levels are, It'll bring up the, the menu, and then you can just highlight and bold, uh, depending upon how you see the, the lesson rolling out. Okay? okay. I've never used it before, but I'll, I'll play around with it. I'll, I'm not afraid to click. If it blows up, I'll start again. Don't ever be afraid of it. <laughs> and you know that I'm always just a text. Right? Yes, thank you. You need me, you just text me, and we'll figure it out together. Okay, great. Well, thank you for another good class. I'm going to go ahead and start tackling this stuff. All right, dear. All right, have a good night. All right, bye. bye.